In this video, I'd like to show a, uh, an example of a balanced three-phase system with a Y-connected source and a delta-connected load. And in this, we're going to assume an, a an ABC wiring sequence or a positive wiring sequence, which means that the A phase leads the B phase by 120 degrees and the A phase lags the C phase by 120 degrees. Now, as you look at this uh, circuit here, we see that we could analyze it using node analysis with one, two, three defined node voltages, or we could analyze it using one, two, three mesh currents. But a more traditional approach to doing or to solving this type of a, of a circuit, and when I say solving it, we want to find, um, say we want to find the power associated with, with this uh, delta connected load, or equivalently, the voltages and currents associated with each of the phases of this load. So to do this, we're going to transform this delta connected load to a Y connected load using the delta to y conversion, I'm not going to take time to, do, to derive it right now, but um, you will recall that zy, the effective or the equivalent impedance in a y-connected load of a delta-connected load is z delta divided by 3. So here we're told in this problem that uh, the delta impedance or the impedance of each of the phases in a delta connection is equal to 300 plus j90. So converting that to a Y-connected load, we would then take Z delta and divide it by 3, which would give us 300 divided by 3 is 100, and J90 divided by 3 is J30. So we convert the load to a Y-connection, but all the rest of the circuit remains unchanged. That means that the current in the line going from the source to the load in each of the phases in this circuit here is the same as the line currents flowing through each of the phases in this circuit here. Similarly, the line voltage in the delta connected load VAB is the same as the line voltages in the Y connected or VAB. So VAB here is the same as VAB here. The line currents are the same. What is different is in the Y connected load we have a neutral terminal defined. A common point that in a balanced three-phase system will be the same as the neutral at the generator, which allows us then to draw a single-phase model of this circuit and then analyze the single-phase circuit determining the line current, I sub little a big A, assuming that this is the A phase. We'll also be able to determine the phase voltage or the voltage across a single phase of the Y-connected equivalent load. And with those two quantities, we can use our knowledge of the relationships between line voltages and phase voltages and line currents and phase currents to determine the line voltages in this Y-equivalent circuit. And as we've already pointed out, the line voltage in the Y-equivalent circuit is the same as the line voltages in the delta-connected circuit we'll then be able to determine the current through the loads and with those voltage and current quantities we can then calculate the complex power associated with each of these loads. So let's go ahead and get started by uh, determining the line current in this single phase model. Well that's clearly going to be I sub little a big A then is going to be simply V A N, the source voltage divided by the line voltage plus the Y equivalent impedance. It's just this voltage here, this source, divided by the sum of those two resistances to give us the current. In this case, that will be 120. We're told up here that um, the phase voltages at the source are 120 volts effective. So it'll be 120 angle zero for the A phase divided by the line impedance, which is 2 minus J3, plus the load impedance, which is 100 uh, plus J30. When you do that calculation, you find the line current in the A phase is equal to 1.14 angle negative 14.8 degrees. And a consistency check at this point is appropriate. 
we know that we have a positive impedance load here. That means that this is an inductive load. And an inductive load, or in an inductive load, good old Eli the Iceman, we would have voltage leading the current, or the way we typically say it is that the current would be lagging the voltage. So the voltage here, VAN, is at angle zero, and the current flowing through this net inductive load is negative 14.8. So in fact, the, the uh, current is lagging the voltage here. Now that we know the line current through here, we can calculate the phase voltage VA in here, and we'll then use that phase voltage to determine the line voltage, knowing the relationship between line voltages and phase voltages in a three-phase circuit. So, VAN. Since we already have the current, we can just go ahead and multiply the current by the load impedance here. We could also do a voltage divider, but uh, VAN then is going to equal I sub little a big A, the line current, times the Y-connected impedance there, Z sub Y, which is equal to 1.14 angle negative 14.8 that we just calculated, times Z sub Y, which is 100 plus J30. And when we do that, we find the phase voltage in this single phase model is 118.7 angle 1.8. Seven. And again, a consistency check shows us that the voltage across here is slightly less than the overall voltage or than the source voltage because we have lost a little bit of voltage across the transmission line. Okay, now, because this is an ABC sequence, we know that the relationship for the line voltage, VAB, plus to minus VAB, is equal to the square root of 3, and it leads by 30 degrees that of the uh, phase voltage VAN. Or to say it again a little bit better, the line voltage VAB will be square root of 3 times as great as the magnitude of VAN, and the line voltage VAB will lead the phase voltage by 30 degrees. So doing that calculation, then we get that VAB uh, is equal to uh, 205.66 angle 31.87 degrees angle 31.87 degrees so it's square root of 3 times 118.7 gives us the 205.66 and adding 30 degrees to the 1.87 degrees of our phase voltage gives us the 31.87 degree phase for the line voltage. Now, this line voltage right here that we calculated in this Y-connected load is going to be the same as the line voltage from here to here, VAB in our delta-connected load. Okay. Thus, we know the voltage across the delta connected phase. We can then calculate the actual current, the phase current, the current flowing through the, in this case, the A phase of the delta connected load by realizing that the current flowing through here is equal to the voltage across it divided by the phase voltage. Or is equal to VAB divided by Z delta. Now note that we are back into the delta connected model, therefore the impedance that we're using is the impedance across that voltage, which is our Z sub delta, which is 300 plus J90. So we've got then 20566 angle 31.87 degrees is the line voltage VAB divided by 300 plus J90, our phase impedance in the delta connected load, and that gives us then 0.66 angle 15.17 degrees. And once again, we note that the current 
is lagging the voltage as it must in a net inductive load. Now that we know both the voltage and the current associated with a single phase of that, we can go ahead and calculate the complex power associated with that load. Call that S sub A for the power associated with a single phase of this load. That's going to equal the line voltage, the voltage across the phase, VAB, times the phase current, I sub A, B, conjugate. I haven't really specifically stated what I sub A, B is. Let's just show it here that this is I sub A, B, the current flowing from the A terminal to the B terminal in our delta connected load. Well, that's equal to VAB, which we found to be 205.66 angle 31.87 times the current, which is 0.66, angle 15.17. Don't forget to conjugate it. And when I'm doing it, just to avoid problems and to make it easier to check my work when I get done, I write down the actual current, IAB, and then show it as that I, that I need to conjugate it. If I just change the sign here, coming back, and I, I always wonder now, did I change the sign? Did I conjugate that or not? Writing it this way explicitly shows me what I need to do and what has been done. When you do that calculation, you find then that the power per phase, or the per phase power, is 135 angle 16.7 degrees. That is the power associated with, or in any one of these three phases. So the total power, the total complex power, is just going to be three times the single phase power, which then is 405 angle 16.7 degrees. And we can also go ahead and say then the power factor is equal to the cosine of the angle of the power, or the power factor angle, which of course is the angle of S. So the cosine of 16.7 degrees, that's equal to 0.958. And as we've already pointed out, it's a lagging power factor. The current is lagging the voltage.